and it's full of leathery objects, like eggs or something. Here's a look at the NECA Toys Alien 40th Anniversary Cane. In a remote region of the galaxy, the United States space tug Nostromo, carrying a cargo of mineral ore, makes its return journey to Earth. The ship's crew, five men, two women, and a cat, are awakened from their hypersleep chamber when Mother, the onboard computer, monitors a strange transmission. According to company law, the crew must investigate any signal indicating possible intelligent life. What begins as a routine search mission quickly escalates into a nightmare of unimaginable terror when the crew discovers and brings aboard an extraterrestrial life form. Before we get down to the review of Kane, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of Kane that we're having a look at in this review. Kane technically is a reissue, and I think the last time I looked at the figure was about six years ago, so it has been a while. I don't think they've changed all that much, other than maybe some face cosmetics, changing and improving the face sculpt. But we're going to take the tape measure nonetheless to the very top of his head. Stop it right there. According to the readouts... Kane reissue stands 7.027, that's awfully exact, inches in height. Let's switch that to centimeters, revealing that the figure stands 17.8 centimeters tall. Now, unfortunately, I don't know where I put that original Kane. Being that it was so long ago, a lot of the times I just put a lot of my figures away in totes that I don't plan on displaying at the present time. Of course, you can understand that would be a lot more difficult by the number of figures that I have in my collection. But we'll do the next best thing. We'll bring in some size comparisons of other figures from this set. There, for example, is the Ash that we just finished having a look at. We can also bring in Parker. Again, still such a tall guy. And we can also bring in Brett. The funny thing about this, these figures, at least, when it comes to Kane and when it comes to Brett, is that they are from two of my favorite movies of all time. Um... Kane, not necessarily Kane, but the actor that played Kane was John Hurt. John Hurt is in my second favorite movie called Owning Mahoney. And then, of course, when we had a look at Brett, Brett is played by actor Harry Dean Stanton, who's in my third favorite movie of all time called One Magic Christmas. I don't know why I felt the need to add that unnecessary 411, but here's a bunch of characters to kind of give you an idea of how Kane stacks up. The figure includes some accessories, some of which will allow you the option to swap out the different ways that you can display the figure for yourself. Strong contender it would be, I would imagine, just to pick up more than one of these, so you can have two different ways of displaying Kane. Stay tuned, we'll talk more about that in a second. The first start with the accessory end of things, he does come include with his exploration light, or flashlight. It's all molded here in black plastic with a little bit of wear and tear added to the very end of it. As you can see, there's a little bit of silver that's added to the end. That's really nice. On the front, you can kind of get a makeshift idea of how the torch would be lit up, how the lights would be lit up. They added a little bit of silver on the end of it, and I don't think much has changed from this to the original one that we looked at about six or seven years ago. Wow, I've been doing this for a long time. But you can see it's just a standard light that you can hold in his hand. When you are putting it into his hand, however, it seems to only really be this workable hand here. This other hand is too relaxed, I feel, to actually be able to hold it. And as with him holding it, he's literally just kind of draping it on his fingers. Um, like, the problem really is that the fingers aren't curved enough, that there's not enough of a ledge for the light to sit on it. So instead, you're pretty much going to be relegated to this side, and you can go ahead and attach that into his hand like that. The other accessory he comes included with is his laser pistol. And I don't think it actually has a name for it. I tried checking around online, and I think they basically just call it Laser Pistol. Again, some nice wear and tear with a nice dry brushing of silver added to it. The ends, either nozzle, have been painted in red, as you can see right there. Let's get that camera to focus in on it. There we go. Again, not really much, I believe, has been changed from the original first version cane that we had gotten before. But it's a nice little piece. I mean, I would love to get. Maybe it could be something that NECA Toys would entertain the idea of doing. I don't expect full-size weapons made from aliens, but why not? Maybe give us a laser pistol replicated from the original 1979 Alien film. I think that would be kind of a fun accessory to get. Now, again, you can either fit that into his hand, uh, just like so. For this, you kind of have to 
force the handle in there because the nature of the thickness of plastic that they used, it is very difficult, I find, to actually get it in there. You could also go the route of heating this up, softening the plastic in his glove enough to be able to fit that into his hand. Or what you can also do too, is a little loop on the side, sort of a makeshift holster that you can hold this in it. Now, instead of fitting it in this way, which you're going to be fighting a little bit more for, I find it's easier to fit it from the back and then just kind of have it looped around the handle just like that. You can have them displayed with it like this as well. Then we can go ahead and move these accessories out of the way. Get that out of the holster there. We'll go put that to the side. And it comes with a couple of swappable head sculpts as well. Now, of course, the defaulted head sculpt would be just normal looking cane, casual walking cane, not really understanding that perhaps he shouldn't be sticking his head closer towards the opening eggs. It's one of those learning lessons, I suppose. But it's a good looking head sculpt. Again, I would suspect not really, unfortunately, having the other one present in front of me that I could do as a comparison. But there has been some real changes with the improved figures that we've looked at recently versus those original released figures. I got to believe like the paint job is much better on this one. I would have to go back even the six years ago and check my original video video on it to see what it looked like before. Or I can just go through my several, several different totes to see if I can actually find that figure. But it's a good looking likeness, I feel. John Hurt. I don't know why I always seem to have a struggle saying his name. John Hurt course isn't owning Mahoney. I think he owe, he is a manager at a casino where Mahoney has to go and gamble away the money he's stealing from the bank. It's a great movie. It's my second favorite film of all time. That's a good looking likeness, I feel. John Hurt. A younger John Hurt. You see they've got a little bit of darker coloring right around the area of his face, for example, kind of giving a little bit of an, indi an indication of stubble. Has a bit of a surprised look on his face. I mean, looking at his lips, it's hard to actually, from a distance, they look like lower teeth, but I think it's just the wrinkles on his lips. They've also darkened that area a little bit as well, just to give a little bit of extra depth to it. So overall, it's a good looking head sculpt. If you prefer not this head sculpt, but instead something post looking at the eggs, then you have this head sculpt to work with as well. Now, the thing about it though, is that this head sculpt, you could put inside the dome. The one thing it will still have is this piece right here. Well, the one thing this doesn't have is that piece right there. But you can see there's the Xenomorph face hugger very securely wrapped around Kane's head. And I hope this is a tease, perhaps, that we're going to be getting ourselves a Nostromo version of Kane. As much as I really dig the idea of getting ourselves the spacesuit crew, I prefer myself to be displaying these characters in their Nostromo outfits. So hopefully that will be something that we'll get at one point. I suppose for the time being, you probably could find, well, I'm really just looking around, I guess the only one closest to this right now is probably Brett. So you probably could take Brett, even though that's not really what he wears. Pop the head sculpt off and replace it with Kane's head. You want to do that for the time being. Nice decent detail on both of these head sculpts though. And then of course he comes with also the helmet. The helmet has always been an issue for me. We'll put the figure down here for a second. This is all molded plastic. I do like the aging that they've added to it, sort of how it's been oxidized. It has kind of a copper color, but then you've got this off green oxidization that's occurred to the metal. And that looks really good all the way around. We've got some nice painted in dials, switches, sort of nice decent sculpting on the back. The problem with this has always been the case. It's hard to put over the head of the figure. I wish they could have split this so you could have actually removed it as two separate pieces. Then, of course, on top of that has two variations of the dome. The dome, the undamaged dome, as you can see right here, has a nice see-through plastic front to it. Again, it's got some nice coloring up the top there. All that oxidized blue incorporated in there. Or if you want to, you can pop this off and replace it with this battle damaged dome, which lends a little bit better than to using this head sculpt right here. Again, you can feed the head sculpt right through, but it is difficult to replace and change both the heads. What I do to do to get around that, I'll show you in a second, but I do like the fact that the glass has been pushed in like that. That is very, very neat. But what we'll do is we'll go ahead and remove this for the time being. Really wish that that was split in half. I like to personally take the figure's head sculpt, pop it off the ball joint first, then feed this onto, you'll see like there's grooves around the neck. The idea is really that this is supposed to fit onto it, but I've never really had a real case where I've been able to get that in place. 
Then from there, I like to put the head on in there. And while it's sort of levitating, because it would be difficult to kind of hold this down and put the head sculpt in, I kind of like to levitate the dome and then just sort of apply pressure to get the head sculpt in place like that. You'll hear a nice snap. Not the snap that will indicate that it broke the plastic, but at least the snap to indicate that I popped the head in place. And then from there, you can go ahead and just fit that down. Just like that. Then go ahead and take the head sculpt, the top of the dome, and fit it over top like that. It is an awfully high-looking dome. It is like that in the movie as well. Probably a little too high here on the figure. But man, does that ever look good. Still an issue, though, that that never really sits into the groove here. Um, I've tried my best to try to get that to line up, but it just never seems to line up properly. You can also then spin the figure around, and the tube supplied on the back, the back of the breathing tank, of course, that just attaches into the little hole located here. There is always this secondary hole that you can see probably right now, now that we're able to look at these videos in 4K. This hose is technically, in theory, possible to be able to fit into that hole, but I never quite get it to stay in place. It always seems to pop back out. I can always get the larger tube in, but the smaller tube just never seems to be able to stay in place. The only downside to doing what I've just now done is now being able to then remove the head sculpt and replace it with the alternate version. Again, you would maybe use the argument that even though the face hugger is wrapped around his face, he doesn't have like the headpiece on that he's wearing with the defaulted head sculpt. So again, if you want to swap this out, just put the figure down here for a second. If you want to do and just sort of simulate what we're looking at here, you can essentially just take this head sculpt and feed it behind to kind of give you the look of what the face hugger would look like wrapped around Kane's head and smashed its way through the front of the plastic dome. Or in the case of seeing the movie, it would have been glass, but you get the idea. I still feel like I want to use this head sculpt for something else though. I'm trying to think of even what I could use as a possible body. I can't really think of one right now. I'm going to have to devise some sort of solution because I really dig this head sculpt. And until we do get ourselves a Nostromo version of Kane, I really want to use this head sculpt for something. I really don't want to use it necessarily for the spacesuit, even though, again, the idea of having that wrapped around his face does look pretty cool. I just don't feel like it's the most movie accurate. But I think it looks neat. I just really want to be able to showcase this in all its gruesome splendor and actually just have it on a regular body as opposed to having it in a spacesuit. But going back to the problem I had with this, obviously when you do put the helmet in place, then it's always the case where now you have to remove the head sculpt. And how do you remove it when this is going to always be hitting it? You can try your best to twist it to the side and sort of navigate the head out. Or what you can also do too is sort of just grab, put your thumb against the face like this bring the this piece of the helmet up and then as together you're sort of just going to wiggle it together i don't really like doing that because i feel like i'm putting a lot of pressure onto the side but it doesn't really give you much other option to do it go ahead, go ahead and put that to the side the reason why i did take it off is to show you the articulation on the figure which we'll have a look at right now I suppose I spent so much time actually talking about the dome and his face sculpt. Quickly, we should be spending some time to discuss the body. As you can see there on the front, there's a cane. Nice weathered age to the front plating here. The standard space suit that they have in the film, though the colors do change. The same one actually that Ripley has as well, although hers at the end has an all white uh, color motif. But this is all like a kind of a mustard or custard yellow. You see the meshing there on the side. Again, I love the coloring that they incorporate in this. I really feel disappointed the fact I can't find that other cane because I would love to be able to bring him in so you guys would be able to do a comparison or see the comparison side to side with that older figure to the newer release. Still got to believe the way that NECA does improve upon these sculpts and the paints that maybe the sculpting is the same, but maybe it would be a case where they've been greatly improved on the paint color scheme because I really feel like the paint is really nice and rich on this guy. He still has like an older body though, so there are limitations. And just by the nature of the fact he's just a big puffy suit, it does really limit what you can do with the articulation, which I know I did say we were going to look at next. I sort of beelined it from, from that for, for the time being. Um, some really nice coloring though, all around. He's got, of course, the guards there done on the front of, of the shins there, or the, the calf guards there. And again, the spacesuit uh, shoes with some pickles on the undersides of his feet. Again, I really wanted to have the other figure brought in, but 
in the meantime, it certainly serves for me to be able to do kind of a re-review of this figure because technically it's the same one that we got before, just a little bit more clear than obviously that video was six years ago. Okay, let's have a look at the articulation here on Kane. So the head rotates all the way around. It is on a ball joint, and you sort of saw the struggles of actually being able to pop that off with the dome in place. It's not the easiest, mind you. But the head does give you luxury of being able to move it up, down, left, and right. In addition to that, he does have articulation in the top torso. It does rotate back and forth perfectly fine, and I love the fact that this piece, this plating, was on the attached top part of the torso instead of the bottom. So... Because I feel like if it was down here, it would stick up and probably start developing warping. By having it up here, it stays flush to the rest of his body. But that moves back and forth. You can also rock it back and forth this way and up and down. The shoulders are going to be limited just by the nature of the way this sculpting is. You can still almost pull off a 90 degree angle bend. Actually, you could pull off a 90 degree angle bend. The shoulders pieces here are actually attached right here. So when you are lifting them, actually right there. Uh, when you are lifting them, they are separate pieces, and they do move out of the way. And that's good, especially when it comes to moving the arms forward and back this way. He does have the bend in the elbow, but again, it's all pretty much null and void. You can see what little of it actually is able to move. It's only just this piece right here. That's it. It does rotate the lower half of his arm, where the control pad is, and you can also rotate the hand all the way around, back and forth. I feel like the nature of the plastic is pretty much the same as we got before. It kind of feels like a real dense material, similar to those older figures. Legs split out. You can bring the legs certainly forward and back this way. You can rotate slightly the top of the thigh. It has a single hinge on the knee, which also allows the lower leg to rotate back and forth this way. And it does also have toe articulation or foot articulation, where you can rock the feet back and forth this way and up and down. With this particular wave, we are getting ourselves the brand new Ash, which we already had a look at, depending on when you guys had a chance to check that out. We do get ourselves a reissue cane that we already had a look at, what now, six years ago. Wow, that's, time flies. I don't think really much does change with this one. The other figure that was part of this current wave was another Xenomorph. And I might even find myself just doing another review of that Xenomorph, though I don't think much has changed from the previous wave Xenomorph that we're, we already had a look at. If anything, I could just chalk it up to the fact that now I've got a different background and a slightly clearer camera. Maybe I just might find myself doing the review of that Xenomorph, even though, like I said, I've already done a review of it. Owners of the first issue cane that came out, what, six or seven years ago, would probably just say to themselves, I'm going to pass altogether getting the reissue because it's just NECA Toys double dipping a mold of a figure that we already got. Valid point, but I would also throw the argument back at you that if you didn't get the chance to get the cane the first time around, it gives you the opportunity not to pay the inflated prices that scalpers are selling these for on eBay, but rather you now have the opportunity of buying these at retail price in an actual physical brick and mortar store. A lot of times it also benefits new time collectors into collecting NECA figures because the reissues a lot of times improve the sculpt, improve the articulation, and most definitely improve the paint job. Which unfortunately I can't even do a comparison on any one of those talking points because I can't up to this point still find where I put that original cane. I did review of it about like six years ago and I don't think I even have had it on my display shelf for six years. I probably packed it away after that first year. So it's somewhere in the dark dwellings of my collection room, somewhere kept in a tote. If I can find that figure, one thing that benefits me is now I can display the figure in two different ways. That first issue cane, I could probably display with the smash dome, with as you can see the head, head portrait. I can really even just use the head sculpts that come included with this figure because I gotta believe it's got a better paint job anyways. I can display the one with the undamaged dome. I can display the other one with the smash dome with the face hugger firmly rooted, firmly wrapped around Kane's face. That's great, gonna be a great way of displaying the figure. I still wish, I hopefully, that we will be getting ourselves an Nostromo version of Kane. As great as it is to get these spacesuit versions of these characters, I really want to see what they look like in their Nostromo outfits. And Kane especially, I feel, is a character that warrants having him on display maybe on a stretched out surgical table with Ash trying to remove the face hugger from his face. I can't really use any other existing figures I already have in my collection because clearly Kane isn't wearing that in the movie. But hopefully, fingers crossed, if we do get ourselves a reissue of Kane, it must mean that they still have the licensing for that portrait available. I gotta hope that we will be getting ourselves just a regular Nostromo outfit Kane to go along with the spacesuit that we got reissued here. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the second issued cane. 
of course, the one that we got what, six years ago, maybe you already still have that one in your collection. The question of today's video is, would you find yourself buying a second one of the same figure that you have in your collection if, for example, it has swappable heads? Because again, that's a good valid point. If you have one figure that has two different head sculpts, maybe you could see yourself buying another one of those figures to get two different ways of displaying it. That's your video question for today. Let me know down below in the comments section. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of Kane that we had a look at in this review. I might find myself still doing the review of the Xenomorph, even though technically we already did the Xenomorph in the previous wave. But being that I've got a different backdrop and a slightly clearer camera, I hope, maybe I might just do a follow-up video with the Xenomorph that came included in this set. Also, if you're new to this channel and you're enjoying all the content that you've been seeing all this time, and let's just say you haven't had a chance to hit the subscribe button, don't postpone another day what you can pull off today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you turn on the bell notification and make sure, yeah, you come back to this channel on a regular basis because we're always posting new content. As you'll probably see, there's always content coming your way every single day. A lot of times, every single day of the week. We even do it on weekends sometimes. There's always new stuff coming your way and there's going to be a whole ton of new NECA reviews lined up and coming your way. So keep your inter intergalactic peepers peeled. I couldn't even get that all out. Stay tuned to this channel because there's definitely going to be a lot more coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.